Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves and all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 and I've done a few videos about it. I recently did a video, a link to it there, on brush masking. And the next video I wanted to do is about what, what they call a masking bug. I'd heard for a long time and I experienced this myself in my kind of limited usage of On One in the past, and that is that their masking is really capable, really powerful, really good, all those kind of things. A lot of people would leave comments on other videos for me about that and say, hey, you should really do this. And so I looked at On One 2020, which is their older version, and I had it, and I played around with it, and I made some videos about it, but I never really got into it. But because I'm now looking for an alternative to Lightroom, and I'm considering On One for that, I'm trying to dive in, do more videos, and learn more about the product and sharing what I learned here. So uh, I'm in a photo today and I wanna talk about the masking bug because the masking is really powerful and really capable in On One. And um, I will also admit that in the beginning it was also a bit confusing for me. So here's a photo. Now I've already made a few adjustments. I started on the develop tab and I did a few things with highlights and shadows and things like that. Then I went to the effects tab and I, let me just turn these off. Um, I used a little bit of dynamic contrast, which took the photo from that to that. You can kind of see how it pops the contrast. And then I added color balance to bring up some warmth in the highlights and the uh, kind of the mid-tones in, in order to get the sunset to really pop a little bit more. But here's where I want to use the masking bug and demonstrate the capabilities of it. So I'm going to add another filter. I'm going to say click on add filter and I'm going to use color enhancer and I'm kind of a big color guy at heart so I'm often playing around with the color filters but what I want to do here is really pop the sunset and then show you how the masking bug works so I'm going to pull up the temperature and tint I'm going to pull up the saturation and the vibrance and I'm going to pull them all up a, a fair amount it's not really even over the top despite having pulled these up a fair amount it's uh it's not something I want to apply to the whole photo so what I really want to do is have the sky pop so there's a few different ways you can get to the masking bug. If you click over here on mask, you can get to it there on the left-hand side. If you click here on this um, little masking icon, it looks like that. If you click on that, um, you'll see a window, or not a window, a menu open up at the top and the masking bug is there. And you can also get to it by just clicking M on your keyboard. So now that we're there, we've got a few different options. You can see that there's a, a section called presets and a section called shapes. So when I first started trying to figure out the masking bug, I was like, yeah, actually when I started using masking in on one, I was like, where are the gradient masks and where are the radial masks and why are they not called gradient mask and radial masks? And it's the masking bug contains the ability to do either a gradient mask or a radial mask. And so that was something that I was able to clarify for myself as I learned the product. There's presets, which as it says here, you select basically a preset and it will pick the shape for you or you can come over here and just pick the shape. So let me click in this menu and show you what some of the options are. Now remember the key thing with masking is white reveals and black conceals. So anywhere that you see in this little visual, I love that they have a little visual there that tells you uh, or shows you where white and black are, but white reveals, which means the edits I make in color enhancer because that's what I'm masking, those edits will appear in the area that is white and they will not appear in the area that's black. White reveals, black conceals. The confusing thing for me was linear top. I hear linear top and I think, oh, my mask goes in the top. It's actually the opposite. It's obscured or it's black in the top. Linear bottom is more what I'd be interested in for this filter because linear bottom is masking out or you know black on the bottom and white on the top. So keep that in mind. There's linear left and right, which is also gradient, but there's also vignette so if I click on vignette and then just stick that in here, you'll see what's happened. Basically, I've got a radial mask. And so again, when you choose a preset, it's gonna choose a shape for you. So I've chosen a radial here because I chose the vignette, but I don't really want that to be honest. So I'm just gonna hit reset. Uh, by the way, if you click on view, you can view the mask and you can see black conceals and white reveals. So this is not uh, the right kind of mask for the photo. I just wanted to show you that you can adjust the shapes and that sort of thing. You can also with this uh, little circle there, you can rotate and then with this, you can move it all around the photo. So I'm gonna uh, click off the view and I'm gonna hit reset because I don't want that. Um, what I would use here would be linear bottom and then I come in and you click once and you can see I've now got a gradient mask applied. So these 
uh, kind of perforated edges, these dotted lines, that's the gradient zone basically. So what I, uh, the way I describe it is that center line is where your gradient basically starts. And because I chose the um, option, uh, what was called linear bottom, to do from the, where the mask is revealed at the top, um, from that center line to this uh, first perforated line is the gradient zone, which means you have a, an increasing effect and then you have full effect above it. Whereas below this, you have a decreasing effect and then no effect below that. So um, you can move this around. And what I might would do here is something like that. And uh, all I'm trying to do is get more color into the sky and have it kind of fade into the photo. That's what the mask looks like. So white is going to be all the effect. Gray is going to be starting to reduce the effect as you come to that center line. And then below the center line, gradually reducing until you get to that bottom line. And then no effect at all. Okay, so I've shown you that. Now I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to go back over here. Now, like I said, you can choose left or right if you want to mask it in from one side or the other. Or you can just skip presets altogether and go straight to shape. So center and edges, these are radial masks. So if I click center, once again, and I'm going to pull this in because of the size. Um, it's just bleeding off the page there. Um, you can see center is, center is masked out and white is revealing the effect outside of that. So I don't want center on this photo. And in fact, I wouldn't use a radial mask on this photo for this edit. But um, edges is the opposite. Edges is basically the invert of a radial mask. So center is a traditional radial mask, which is conceal on the center and reveal on the outside. Edges is basically an invert of that. So this was kind of confusing to me at first until you start playing with it and looking at the shapes. Now I'm gonna hit reset because I don't want that either. Um, gradient is just grabbing the gradient. Same thing we did before, right? But here's one that's really cool that I think is, um, I don't really ever hear talked about and that's reflected gradient. So let me show you this one. This is basically a gradient zone in the center, or excuse me, a masking zone in the center that's completely black and then a gradient above it and below it. So a photo like this really gives you a lot of options because I can compress that, that black zone, if you want to call it that, and then um, just move these around in order to reflect that gradient. And if I show you view, you can see there that no effect, in other words, the color enhancement that I've done is not going into that black area, but it is going into the two white areas. And I love that. That is a really cool tool. I actually might increase the gradient zone just to kind of smooth that transition. But one of the things I often find in shots like this is if you're not masking in your color, you're reflecting a whole lot of color into the cityscape and you may not want to do that. And I often do not want to. And I've often had to go in and then just um, use an eraser and erase it from that section. But this reflected gradient gives you the ability on a photo like this to not have the color apply in the center, but still apply above and below it. I think that's super powerful. And that's what I would use here um, to do that. So I'm one more time for view. And you know, again, you can tilt this if you need to. Um, don't need to in this case, because it's straight. And of course that moves it up and down, but very powerful, very, um, very useful feature, I think, this reflected gradient and not something that I've seen in other products. I think it's a, a really original and interesting and useful idea. But that's my tour of the masking bug. I think that I'm just fine with using it the way that is. And so I'm gonna go over here. And then, you know, once you have the mask in place, you can increase or decrease the amount on the slider. So you could say, well, I really wanna warm in some of those areas and I want more saturation and more vibrance. And so you can see that that's bumping those up, but it's not impacting this zone because we've masked it out thanks to the reflected gradient in the masking bug. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what masking bug is. Uh, in simple terms, it's a combination of a radial mask or a gradient mask, and you can apply it with different presets or different shapes in order to customize it and apply it on the photo the way you see fit. And that's it for this one, my friends. Just wanted to walk through the masking bug and kind of explain it for those of you that may be new to On One. And I know many of you are not. It's kind of new, new to me. So I'm working through kind of the things that I'm trying to learn and share here um, as, as I work through considering On One as a Lightroom replacement for my workflow. But that's it for this one. Again, my friends, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.